uh, man, I, I missed uh, being here. And, and you know, I, it's been almost a month since I've been able to preach, and that wasn't really intentional. It just kind of happened that way. Um, but, uh, you know, we've had, we've had some great Sundays. Uh, Jason Ryder preaching, Angel, Josh, and then last week, uh, Micah. It's, uh, it's really been a, a great summer. It's, it's maybe been our, our best summer as a church ever. I, I feel like it's just been so great. And, um, you know, although our weather won't reflect it for some time, it's fall, you know. It is, it's, it's fall, and, um, and uh, God needs to adjust the thermostat for us a little bit. But, you know, kids are back in school, and uh, traffic is brutal. Amen. It is crazy. Um, I'm not. I'm going to try not to leave the house anymore. Uh, but our schedule has like multiplied. Angel and my, our life is over. People are like, hey, can we get together tonight? It's like, no, because we don't have a life anymore. We have to drive our kids everywhere. I'm really excited. Uber is expanding to Uber Youth, and and so I'm not going to drive my kids anymore. I'm just going to Uber them places. That's going to be fantastic. Uh, two weeks away from LSU football. I'm just joking. Y'all quit judging me. You're like, I'm like, that is just awful. I'm finding a new church. That pastor won't even drive his kids. Um, got pumpkins in the stores already, right? OMG, pumpkin spice. You know, y'all excited about that? And then the Hall- Halloween, Halloween, Halloween decorations are already out. And they're like terrifying now. Have y'all seen these things? I'm in Costco. The other, I was in Costco many times this week for some reason. Their, their uh, Halloween decorations are terrifying. I'm walking around, and, and one's like this monster, like, reaches out for me, freaked me out. I dropped my sample. It was uh, a bad situation, um, you know, but uh, Angel and I, we're excited about all that God is going to do this fall. I'm excited about what God has done. We had a fantastic summer, and I'm just believing that we're going to have a fantastic fall as well. Uh, all of our, like Angel said, all of our purpose groups are launching. Everybody say purpose groups. Come on, they are going to be fantastic. Um, and, and maybe you're like, hey, I, want, I like to gather people. I like to do things. I like to do fun things. I like friends. Man, lead one. You know, put one together. And you can even gather, you know, friends that maybe don't even go to church. Maybe that first layer, that first opportunity is going to be them saying yes to gathering, to do something fun. And you might make an e- eternal um, impact in their life. And so what a great opportunity, uh, great time of year, and, and I'm excited to be starting a new series this morning uh, called Let's Talk About It. Let's talk about it. We're going to talk about five different topics, and I love uh, a series where I'm not bound to one thing. We're going to, I'm ADD. We're going to be all over the place, but I believe over the next five weeks, we're going to talk about some life-changing subjects uh, going to talk about things that will help our lives personally and, and spiritually. We're going to talk about things that we all want to know uh, and maybe don't, don't want to ask. How many of y'all, like, you've ever been curious about something? You want to ask a question, but you don't want to ask. Either you feel like you should already know this thing or you're embarrassed to ask because you don't want people to know that you might need this information uh, or, or maybe you just didn't have a chance to ask. So I believe we're going to go through some things that can be life-changing and impacting for all of us and, and going to give us some clarity on some things on our spiritual journey uh, that maybe we've been wanting to know and we're, we've been wanting to lean into. And, and I also believe he's just going to bring clarity and some revelation to some things that we didn't know we needed. Amen? Like, I didn't ask that question. I didn't even know I needed to know that. Uh, I believe God is going to do that this uh, over the next five weeks. Uh, but the topic this morning, it's one that uh, many of us deal with. Uh, and struggle with. It's something that uh, doesn't have any boundaries, and, uh, but it comes in and it interrupts and it disrupts and it, uh, it can very much negatively affect our lives. And so uh, I want us to take a look at our beautiful brand new screens and check out our subject for today. It was supposed to be a fun video. It's not, I guess. Not going to be a video. Should have told her that. I'm sorry. This is awkward. So. Orange? Who made the console orange? Do I look orange? I didn't touch it. Orange is not my color. Not me. Hello, everybody. Ah! Oh, my gosh. I am just such a huge fan of yours. And now here I am meeting you face to face. (laughs) Okay. How can I help? Um, I can take notes, get coffee, manage your calendar, walk your dog, carry your things, watch you sleep. Wow, you have a lot of energy. (laughs) Maybe you could just stay in one place. Anything. Just call my name and I'm here for you. Okay, love that. And what was your name again? Oh, I'm sorry. I can get ahead of myself. I'm anxiety. I'm one of Riley's new emotions and we are just super jazzed to be here. Where can I put my stuff? 
Anxiety, amen? Anxiety, when anxiety hits. Uh, and there is nothing funny about anxiety, you know, other than maybe the movie clip. Um, but, you know, there's, there's uh, anxiety that so many of us face and battle. And, and there's another thing, it's, it's stress. It's stress and anxiety, uh, very, kind of similar, can be confused, but they're two very different things. Uh, you know, when we're stressed or, or dealing with stress, that's more about external circumstances that, uh, that we might be facing or circumstances that happen to us that uh, lead to stress in our lives. Uh, and a lot of the times, you know, we can't control those things that stress us out. Sometimes it's just the world we deal with. Uh, we might not be able to fix or correct those external circumstances, uh, but we can increase our capacity and our ability to handle bad days or stressful days. Uh, we can put some things into place uh, to be able to withstand the stresses of life, right? But anxiety is different uh, than stress in that everything can be going great. Everything can be going. One of the circumstances are all in line, and then there's a war happening on the inside of you. Like, it makes no sense. Everything is great. You got everything you ever wanted. You know, you got the perfect life, perfect job, perfect finances, perfect everything, but anxiety. There's this war happening on the inside of your emotions. You know, there's real solutions to this. Like, there's practical, there's spiritual. There's all these different solutions to uh, help us relieve the, sh the, the, the effects of anxiety or, or to give some, yeah, just to buy some relief, you know, from, from anxiety, the grip of anxiety or, or depression. You know, it might be therapy, you know, getting some counseling. And look, that's not an easy step. Uh, years ago, I was like, you know what? I just want to make sure I'm doing all right. I know I'm perfectly sane and, and, and mentally stable, and there's nothing wrong with me at all. I just want to check. I just want the doctor to confirm how perfect I am, you know. Uh, but I'll tell you, it, I'm just obviously being uh, facetious. Uh, but I went to a counselor and talk about an awkward step because you're in a waiting room, and you're like, Obviously, all these people are crazy. They're probably wondering what I'm doing here. You know, like, can you help us? You know, like, maybe I could do a counseling session for them while I'm out here in the waiting room. Uh, but it's an awkward first step, but sometimes you might need it. Might be medication. You know, God uses many different ways to help us in our lives, and there's no shame in getting help. Amen? No shame in it. Uh, God can heal us through doctors. God can heal us through counseling. It's, he, there's a lot of different methods. You know, I think a lot of us, have experienced anxiety at some point in our lives. Uh, and, and also think that if you, have, you had never experienced anxiety before 2020, you probably did in that year or the years following that. I know that's my story. I don't think I'd ever experienced significant anxiety until that year. It was probably one of the hardest years of my life. Um, you know, and I think it was the same way for so many of us. I'm not, I don't think I'm unique in that. Uh, but I struggled with not only stress, but high anxiety. You know, the church shutting down, building out this building, the financial stresses, um, you know, kids out of school, fear of getting canceled, and, and overall, just a fear of not getting it right. There were so many different boxes to check as, as a leader, and I uh, didn't want to get it wrong. Uh, years later, in the middle of a uh, another renovation. Apparently, I need to stay out of the renovating industry altogether. Um, I, we were renovating a house for Angel and I live in to live in, and um, I, I was I was out of my mind. I was so stressed out. I was not healthy. And I'm talking to my dad one day, and I think my dad called Jason Ryder, and Jason Ryder, who's the contract, he calls me. Hey, man, what's going on with the what's, what's up, bro? What's going on with the remodel? Um, and so he, he came by and checked it out, and he walks in. He goes, so you stressed out, huh? I was like, yeah. He goes, we need to clean this place up. There's stuff everywhere. I'm stressed out. And so he goes, I want to come back tomorrow, and I want you to get all this stuff cleaned up. And so I cleaned it all up. And, uh, but there was a breaking point. You know, there was a breaking point. I remember one day I'm at this house right before we painted it, and angels around, uh, you know, praying over this house, you know, anointing it with oil before we painted it, and which makes the old paint not stick, but she's doing it anyway. And um, I was taking a light fixture down, and, and like, everything's fine. I, like, I was happy. I got my wife there. My boys are there to help me. I'm, I'm in a good mood. Like, there's no problem I'm making progress. It's cleaned up. I was taking a light fixture down, and all of a sudden, uh, my legs went numb. Uh, my heart started racing, and, and I was like, I, I thought I was going to pass out. I was like, baby, we got to get out of this house. Let's, let's go. And it took me some time to, like, come get back to normal, a few hours. 
it, it was a breaking point. I felt extreme anxiety. It, it was like an, it was probably an anxiety attack. You know, and, and, and we don't want to think anything's wrong with us. And the truth is that anxiety is not a malfunction of the mind. It's a signal. It's a signal. I said that weird. It's a signal. I like added some syllables to that. It's a it's our body trying to tell us something. Hey, some, something's not right. Something's going on. Uh, maybe it's something that's happened to us. Uh, in some cases, it can be based on the choices we've made. Uh, there may, and there may be some things that we can change in our lifestyle uh, or in our experiences to, to help heal us. You know, there's the, but it's a signal. Amen? That means something's wrong with you. It means something's wrong. Um, you know, right before this story, this is what I want to teach from this morning. It's a story in uh, 1 Kings 19. Uh, that I, I believe it will give us some truths. I believe it's going to give us some truths to uh, help us when anxiety hits. Uh, but right before the story, it's in, in chapter 18, uh, the prophet Elijah, he defeats 850 prophets um, of Baal and Assyria. They, these were not God's prophets. These were, um, you know, false prophets. Uh, and, he, and then he prays a prayer that ends a three-year drought, three-and-a-half-year drought. So Elijah uh, ushers in many miracles. God uses him, and it's incredible how God used Elijah. He's one of the greatest prophets to have ever lived, and, and he watched God do the absolute impossible through him. Things that were not possible happen through his prayers and through his uh, God using him. But right after 1 Kings 18, uh, you know, if we flip to 1 Kings 19, everything changes. We see this major shift uh, so let's, that, that's what I want to take a look at this morning. It's, it's 1 Kings 19, verse 1. It says, uh, and these have names in it, and I'm scared because Angel's so good at reading these names. I thought about giving her a second mic, and she could just kind of like say the names instead of me, but I did practice. Uh, it says, now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed the prophets uh, with the sword. So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, uh, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like one of them. Elijah was afraid, and he ran for his life. Uh, when he came to Beersheba in Judah, uh, he left his servant there, and uh, while he himself went on a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a brush broom, uh, a broom brush, and, uh, and sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. So basically Ahab, he tells, uh, he's the king of Israel, tells Jezebel, the queen of Israel, what uh, Elijah had done. Uh, and, and they're both pretty upset. They get mad. They get offended. And so Jezebel uh, sends this message to Elijah. She gets a message. She posts it on Facebook. She's going to tweet it out. She's like, I'm going to tell him a thing or two. I'm going let to the, let this out there. Uh, you know, but for real, like, it's a comment. She makes a comment. She sends a comment. It starts with a comment. It starts with a post. And it was a message to Elijah. Uh, and he goes from seeing the miraculous to a severe downward spiral. And it's the same way for so many of us. You know, it starts with a comment. It starts with a post. It starts with a text. It starts with a negative thought. It starts with a bad dream. Whatever it is, it starts. And so Elijah is undone. You know, this message from Jezebel just does him in. He runs for his life, and he, he cries out to the Lord, I've had enough. I've had all that I can take. And so he's so scared of Jezebel that she's going to kill him, that, she, that he prays to God to kill him. He's like, Lord, she's going to kill me, kill me. You know what I mean? It's like, Kind of weird logic there, but you know, Jezebel must have been, I think she was like super scary, right? Have you ever been so scared of a woman before in your life? Yes, thank you, thank you. Who is it, your grandma, your mom, your mom? Okay, yeah, your grandma's sweet. Um, I hadn't met your mama yet. You know, but today, this, this room is for anyone who's ever said, I have had enough. I have had all that I can take. I can't go anymore. So let's take a look at the next four verses. It says uh, this, uh, 1 Kings 19, 5. Uh, then he laid down under the brush and fell asleep. At once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. Uh, he looked around, and by his head there's some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. Uh, he ate and drank and, and laid down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, hey, get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up, he ate, he drank, strengthened by the food. He traveled for 40 days, 40 nights, until he uh, reached Horeb, 
Horeb, yeah, uh, the mountain of God. So the angel of the Lord shows up, shows up, and, and, and speaks to him. And, 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 and God's presence is here. Do y'all believe that this morning? Like he shows up. He shows up for you today. He shows up in our time of need. He rescues. He heals. He fills. He restores. When we are weak, he is strong. Yes. And, and so God not only wants to uh, supernaturally touch our lives, uh, he wants to help us spiritually. And he wants to help us today physically and practically. And so the first thing that I want us to get this morning, uh, something that will help us is, is this to find the pace of grace. we got to find that pace of grace. You know, and for a lot of us, it'll be different. This might look different for each of us. Uh, but in different seasons, seasons of life, uh, you know, it will adjust and it will change and it will look differently. You know, we need to be obedient to the voice of God, obedient to the Holy, Holy Spirit as He leads us, and be willing to evaluate and, and adjust our pace uh, whenever necessary. You know, our pace of grace is, is not what we're able to do, but instead it's what we're able to do and still stay sane. Amen? Like, Because a lot of us, we're doing so much and we're not able to stay sane. That means we're, our pace of grace is off. You know, are you with me this morning? You know, so your pace of grace is the capacity that God has given you for this season. You know, and a lot of us, we are at a pace. We are running at a pace that we just cannot sustain for a long period of time. Ecclesiastes 4.6, I love this scripture so much. It's so uh, helpful and practical. It says, better one handful with tranquility, which is like peace, than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. So that's like, you got, I got one. It's like, hey, it's nice. I can smile. I can chill. I can love my family. I can love my kids. I can, uh, my friends enjoy being around me. Or you got two handfuls and you got your veins popping out and you're mean to your family and you're freaking out because I'm going to lose what I got. You know what I mean? It's, that's, that's not peaceful. That's not sustainable. That's not healthy, and that's not helpful for your family. It's that old saying that less is more. You know, that slower pace leads to tranquility. It leads for the thing we all long for, peace. Amen? In order to find that pace of grace that's right for you, there's some things that you might need to say no to. You say no to those things so you can say yes to the best things that, that are available to you in life. You, know, you say no to some things so you can say yes to the best things. Uh, so today, for a lot of us, we need to spend this afternoon uh, pushing pause. You know, we're doing this new app as a family, kind of individually. It's called Pause. And it's these, like, minute or ten minutes. They, they say it's a minute, but it's like ten minutes of, like, just peace. You just push pause, and you connect with God, unify with God. Uh, you might need to pause this afternoon, take a nap, spend some time with your family instead of uh, trying to get some work done. You know what? I'm going to get a head start on my week. I'm going to crank some workouts so I can have an easy Monday. Slow your pace. Enjoy some tranquility in your life. you got to find your pace of grace. Amen? Uh, 1 Kings 19.9 says this. Um, uh, reading on in the story, it says, uh, There he went into the cave and spent the night, and the word of God um, came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? Uh, he replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left, and they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great, powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. And a lot of y'all know this. Y'all know that the Lord was in the gentle whisper. It was the voice of the Lord. The presence of the Lord did not come like Elijah had expected. He expected it was going to be thunderous. It was going to be fire. It's going to be shaking the rocks, but it wasn't. It was in the gentle whisper. And so I love these next verses I mean, I love those verses uh, because they, they lead us to the second thing that I believe, the second truth that I believe can help us and change us. We have to create space to seek him. If his voice is going to be in the whisper, we have to create space to seek him. So Elijah is seeking God. Uh, he's waiting for him. He's, he, he's, he's trying to hear the voice of the Lord. He's, he's leaning into his presence. You know, in the, in the pace of your life, uh, where can you create space for you to be able to seek him. 
So Elijah had to take a break, step out of the cave onto the mountain edge. He had to create some space for the Lord uh, to speak to him. And, and, you know, the past two Sundays have been kind of the main point of the past two Sundays have been along these lines. You know, and I don't think it's any mistake. You know, I think God wants us to truly get this, that we have to make space for the Lord in our lives. So this is week three that, hey, this is a main point of us to make space, create space for the Lord in our lives because we will be healed by his presence. And we don't have to wait till Sunday morning to get in the presence of the Lord. I love that. Uh, man, I just can't wait to get to Sunday. I need the presence of the Lord. We can get into the, the presence of the Lord. We can create space for the Lord every day of our lives. And we should be creating space for the Lord every day of our lives. We'll be changed by the presence of the Lord. Uh, Psalm 73, you know, the psalmist starts off by talking about his struggles. He's talking about his pain. He's talking about his anxiety, uh, you know, the, the things that brought him uh, pain in his life, depression to his life. And he says, hey, I almost lost my footing. I was almost gone. But then he talks about God and how God helped him uh, breathe fresh life back into his soul. And he says, hey, even though I've been so much, even though I've struggled, you are my help. It says this in Psalm 73, 23, uh, yet I still belong to you. For you are my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. Lead me to glorious destiny. Whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. My health may fail. My spirit may grow weak. But God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. He will change our lives forever. When we know how to seek God and we know how to seek him and we do seek him daily, when we create space for him in our lives, when we understand that when we struggle and when we don't struggle, we can turn to him. Come on, we don't just have to go through him in, in, a, in, a, in a desperate situation. We can go to him every day of our lives. So if you're struggling to create space in your life for the Lord, um, I, I want you to try something this week. I want you to give this a, a try. I want you to get your phones out because I want you to try this. It's called the first 15, okay? I want you to take a picture of the screen. Uh, I want you to spend five minutes in the Word. Do we have that? Uh, five minutes in the Word. There we go. Uh, five minutes in worship, five minutes in prayer. Come on, 15 minutes. We can all carve out 15 minutes. Five minutes in the Word. Just get, read the Bible. Go on the Bible app on your version. Uh, five minutes in worship. Put on your favorite worship song and worship God and, and five minutes in prayer. And it's going to be, it might be awkward at first. It might take some getting used to. Uh, you know, I, I saw this meme uh, just yesterday. It says, if you're too busy to pray, then you're too busy. Amen. Carve out 15 minutes. 15 minutes a day. First 15 uh, you know, spending time in his presence, it heals, it restores our soul. It is essential for our lives to, uh, to be full of peace and to have experienced some tranquility in his presence. Uh, it's so important. Uh, I'm going to read on, on in the story. It's 1 Kings 19, 15. It says, uh, the Lord said to him, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. Uh, when you get there, anoint Hazel king over Abram, or not Abram, Aram, uh, also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshai. I don't think that's the right per pronunciation. Uh, king over Israel. Anoint Elisha, son of Snapchat. And um, <laughs> I hope y'all know that was intentional. <laughs> Usually my planned humor does not hit. Um, snap, snap hat from, from Abel. Uh, melanoma, to uh, succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazel. Elisha will put to death anyone who escapes the sword of Jehu. Uh, yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bow bowed down to Baal and whose mouths have not kissed him. You know, God sends him back the way he came. You know, back to do what he was originally called to do. Back to the task at hand. You know, for some of us, of us in this room, we need to get back to, to where we started. Back to the beginning of our relationship with God. Back to some of the basics. Back to some of the passion. Back to, you know, when we were excited about serving Christ. You know, so the next truth that will help us today, find or renew your God-given purpose. Come on, you were created with a purpose and when you start thinking about the needs of others uh, and get the main focus off of ourselves, uh, it, it tends to reduce anxiety. 
You know, we were created for purpose and to carry out a God-given purpose. And ultimately, our greatest purpose is that our lives would bring honor and glory to God. That is like the basic uh, description of your God-given purpose, to live your life, to glorify God, to please Him with our life. I found this quote. It's uh, Viktor Frankl. He was a a Holocaust survivor. So that's a key detail that gives a lot of context to these words and, and how powerful they are. It says, life is never made unbearable by circumstances, but only by lack of meaning and purpose. Come on, that's what makes life unbearable. It's when there's a lack of meaning and purpose. So as a church, we want to help you find your God-given purpose. We want to help you find your passions. We want to to help you find and and renew your your God-given purpose. And so our Step into Purpose class, it it is one of those things that is so key and so helpful in, in discovering how God wired you and how he created you and what he created you for to discover some some gifts and some talents that you possess that you might not even know about. Uh, Our next class is September 8th, right after this service, right after the first service. Give an hour. Give, is it even an hour? It's an hour. About, about an hour. Um, But man, what a great investment into yourself to discover some things that you possess, some things that God created you to be able to do. Uh, we also have serve and outreach opportunities, small group opportunities that help you find your purpose. You know, we've watched countless people over the years be set free by serving and, and set free through an outreach. Uh, and there's a reason why. It's because when we begin to walk with purpose and walk in purpose, God honors us and he brings freedom to our lives. So what is God calling you back to? Or what is God calling you to in your life? And when our eyes pivot from being all about me to being all about Jesus, he sets us free. And Paul understood this. Paul is one of the, my favorite biblical characters. Uh, he understood what anxiety felt like, and he put some beautiful language to it. It's 2 Corinthians 4.8. It says, we are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. And a few more verses ahead of that. It says, therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. For our our light and momentary troubles are uh, achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what what is unseen. Since what we see is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Amen. So the last truth that I believe uh, will truly help us when anxiety hits is to have some life-giving friendships. Find life-giving friendships. And and those are friendships that push us closer to Jesus. You're like, oh, I got a friend group that I've been, we've been friends since kindergarten. We've been friends our whole life. We've been through so much together. They're, They're my ride or dies. Look, hey, those are special friendships. But a life-giving friendship is one that will challenge you and push you closer to Jesus. It's not one that co-signs. It's one that pushes you closer to Jesus and encourages us and helps us to grow and develop a relationship with Jesus. Amen? Like that's the kind of friendships I'm looking for in my life is someone that's going to challenge me and push me closer to be the man that God has called me to be. Um, you know, we were never meant to walk through life alone, struggles alone. Uh, a friend of mine calls it, hey, we're, we're not meant to suffer in silence. we got to have people in our lives. We're, we're created and built to, to, uh, to need life-giving friendships and life-giving community. Uh, you know, that, that's, that's what our heart is for purpose groups. They're not just, oh, let's just get people together, just, you know, get as many people together as possible, frequently as possible. It's because it will change your life. And we, we believe in it so much because we've seen how often that commitment to a purpose group, a life-giving community, can, can completely impact your life. You're going from rows, which is beautiful. I love rows. You move them to circles. We take the mask off, and we get to, you know, really get to know each other. And that's when God can bring some, some freedom and some healing to our lives. God brings those, those friendships to our lives that are a game changer. They're an absolute game changer for us. Amen? Got to have it. So let's ask the Lord to, to help us to, to find the pace of grace. We got to find a sustainable pace that will help us in our lives. We got to create space to seek Him. 
you got to carve out some side. That's like not one of those things, well, hey, it's optional. You know what I mean? Like, it's essential for your life. Uh, it's funny, every time I hear that word essential, I think of essential workers. Uh, right after uh, COVID, it kind of like turned down a little bit. We were, I, I gathered with a group of guys that were in recovery. And, hey, how has 2020 affected you? And we went around the room, and there's this one guy, I can't remember his name. He... Um, but he like said with like as much arrogance and pride as you've ever seen, well, as an essential worker, it didn't affect me. And we're like, get over yourself, man. But is, it is essential for your walk with Christ. It is essential for you to become the man or the woman that God has called you to be to create space to seek him, to develop your relationship with him. We've got to find or renew your God-given purpose. Come on, we got to go back to some basics, and you got to find and establish some life-giving friendships. Amen? So important. So I want to close this morning with some scriptures. And, and this is another great opportunity for you to get out your phone and take some pictures because I want you to get these scriptures down. Because uh, if you battle with uh, anxiety on any level, these are the scriptures you want to be able to pray. You don't have to know them word by word, but you want to know what they say. Have them in your heart. So when you wake up in the middle of the night, your heart's racing, you know what to pray. You know what the truth of God's word is. Uh, you know, so uh, I also want to say that as we close service, uh, our altar's open. You know, that time of worship isn't uh, just, just to praise God. It's an opportunity for us to come and pray for one another. Sometimes we walk through things, and I've said uh, ever since I became a Christian, I never want to get to a point where I am so high and mighty that I can't run to the altar to seek prayer. Amen? Many Sundays I come for prayer. And they're, oh, my gosh, he's the pastor. He needs prayer? Yeah, I'm the pastor. I need prayer. That's why I need prayer, because I'm the pastor. Um, so I just encourage you, man, let those guards down and let someone pray for you because life is hard, amen? I don't believe in the theology of once, you, of once you say yes to Jesus, life is rainbows and unicorns. I haven't experienced that. I experienced the hardships of life, but also experienced the strength of Christ that changes everything, amen? So if you're taking notes, and I encourage you to do that or snap a picture, I just want to read these scriptures. 1 Peter 5, 7. It says, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Come on, trust him with your pain. Trust him with your fears. Jo uh, Joshua 1, 9, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This is the truth of God's word. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you will prevail because there are weapons against us. Amen. And you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. 1 John 4, 4. Uh, but you belong to God, my dear ch children. Uh, you have already won a victory over these, those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Philippians 4, 6. Do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Come on, how many of y'all need to hear that this morning? Quit worrying. Start praying. Tell God what you need. Thank him for all that he's done. That's a thankful heart. Then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. That's that peace that passes understanding. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And then last but not least, Deuteronomy 20, verse 4. For the Lord your God is going with you. He will fight for you against your enemies, and he will give you victory. Amen? Come on, we got to get these scriptures. We did not get those scriptures up there. I'm so sorry. Um, these scriptures are life-changing. These scriptures will change everything for us as we walk with them, as we walk through fears or, 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 or trials or struggles. You know, having the Word of God in our heart, tattooed on our heart, permanently in our heart, is a game-changer as we're struggling. God is here. He's here, and He's here to help us. Amen? Let's all stand up. I just want to pray for you this morning because anxiety is real, and it's a bear. It's a struggle. It's, it, it, it's real, and, and it's a great indicator that, man, something might be off, and there's things to help us, and, and, and the Lord is there, and He's our healer. And he brings peace where we feel like we can't have peace. So I just want to pray that peace over you this morning. Lord Jesus, we love you so much. And I thank you, Lord, for your great, great, mighty love for us. 
You're a powerful God. You're all powerful and you're mighty. You're mighty against our struggles. You're mighty against our fears. You're mighty against our pain. And I pray peace over everyone in this room this morning. Whatever someone's walking through, Lord, you know their pain, Lord. I pray that you would walk right alongside of them, that they would lean into you, lean into their relationship with you, Father, that you would help them, strengthen them, encourage them, Lord. Send the right people around them, those life-giving friendships that will help them through this hard season, those friendships that will be key and fully essential for them to endure and persevere in choosing you, Father. Surround us, Lord, with the right people, Lord, and help us, Lord. Help us to develop that relationship with you that brings strength and life to our lives. Father, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're here this morning and you've never said yes to Jesus, it's just one of those decisions. I've just never, I, I kind of, you know, I always believe there's a God, but I've never made that conscious decision to invite him into my heart. Or maybe you have prayed that prayer and believed, but you somewhere off the way, along the way, you kind of fell off course. And like today's a day just to rededicate your heart to Christ. I want to lead you in a prayer as well. Let's all pray this together. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose again. You paid the price for my sin. Give me a fresh start. A new beginning. I give my life to you. And I entrust my life to you. You are the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all. Give God a hand clap. Well, hey, we love y'all so much. As we worship, our altars are open. We would love a chance to pray with you and believe with you. We love y'all.